Welcome to the new semester presentation of the Introduction to Social Welfare. This is Social Work 106. My name is Bill Gaelic, and I'll be your host and guide through the lessons that we'll be looking at together as the semester goes along. Um, a little bit about me just before we get started. Uh, most of you do not know me, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about why it is that I am the one who well, I am one of the people who uh, uh, teach this course for the University of Alaska School of Social Work. I um, actually retired from the field of social work in 2014, but have kept teaching uh, ever since that time. And in fact, have been teaching for the University of Alaska Anchorage, at first on the Kenai Peninsula campus, and then gradually more and more online, and now exclusively online for the University of Alaska Anchorage Campus School of Social Work. Um, and I have something close to 70 semesters of teaching under my belt now, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty proud of that, actually. And this course is, I believe, probably the first course that I taught for the university back in the early 1990s or late 1980s. Um, and I have probably taught this course uh, at least two dozen times, and I think more than that. I have 40-some years' experience uh, in the field before the time that I retired from active social work. Now, this is aside from my teaching experience. I uh, worked a couple of years in public assistance programs uh, when I first went to work in the field with my bachelor's in social work in uh, the mid-1970s in Orlando, and then switched over to child protection and worked another four years in child protection in Orange County, Florida. In the late 1970s, I went to work for the uh, children's home in Orange County, Florida. It was At that time, it was called Great Oaks Village. And this is where the state would place children initially uh, when they were removed from their families because of abuse or neglect. During that time, I worked first with a population of adolescents who were cons considered to be ungovernable by the courts and did that for a number of years. Went back to uh, school to get my master's in social work in Tallahassee at Florida State and returned to work at Great Oaks Village and I was managing the counselors on campus for the last uh, three or four years that I worked there. Now aside from working with ungovernable children, there were cottages there for um, ch uh, children aged 6 to 18 who were removed from the home because of abuse or neglect. We also had an independent living program for uh, adolescents who were not likely to ever be placed in foster care because of the shortage of foster homes at the time. Um, and uh, we also had a semi-independent living program where we were preparing children, uh, adolescents really, for independence as many of those uh, youth would age out and hit the streets without the supports necessary and the education necessary to prepare them for life in the real world like most of us have had. In 1987, I left Orlando and moved to Kenai and began working there as an outpatient therapist with uh, what was then known as the Central Peninsula Mental Health Center. I believe now it is Peninsula, part of Peninsula Community Health Services, PCHS. Um, and uh, did work there, again, mostly with uh, children and families, and many of those children were involved in the child welfare system. Um, for about seven and a half or eight years uh, at the mental health center, then switched over and began working for the state of Alaska in what is now the Office of Children's Services, um, then was the Division of Family and Youth Services. And I supervised, at first, all of the functions in the Kenai Peninsula from initial report taking of concerns about abuse or neglect all the way through the adoption of some children. Ultimately, we focused uh, my energies on uh, the supervising the initial assessment or investigations unit in, in Kenai and also supervising the Seward office as well. While I was in Kenai, I also began teaching at Kenai Peninsula College and uh, since that time have taught courses in social work, sociology, and human services, as I said, something for like 70-some semesters during that time. Um, retired from full-time work with OCS in 2014 
moved out of state to Indiana in 2015, and I continue to teach online courses for UAA uh, School of Social Work from uh, down here in the lower 48. I've also had different volunteer experiences, including uh, working as a volunteer big brother in Florida and in Alaska. I'm sorry, in Michigan and Florida, not in Alaska. And uh, also hosted foreign exchange students in addition to adopting uh, three boys over the years. And um, so had quite a bit of experience in, in uh, working with kids and raising kids. Uh, for a single guy, I, I uh, probably have had more experience than most. So in any event, um, that's a little bit about me. You see my email addresses there. The university prefers that we use our alaska.edu uh, accounts to communicate with each other. But I can also tell you that my Comcast account is private. No one else sees those emails. And so you can feel free to contact me there as far as I'm concerned. Also, my phone number, my cell phone number is uh, local for Alaska, as you can tell still, and does have text capabilities, although the university has asked us not to communicate with students via text. Uh, and so uh, you may want to either give me a call there or at my home phone number uh, or send me an email. Now, remember, I'm in Indiana, and so that means I'm in the eastern time zone. And for most of you, those of you who are in Alaska at least, I'm four hours ahead of you. So if you're working on a project at um, 10 o'clock at night and think, oh, I have a question, let me see if he's still awake, I can pretty much tell you I won't be because it'll be 2 a.m. down here. So please keep that in mind when you go to contact me. Now, a little bit about uh, what to expect for this course. First, the textbooks that you'll be working out of. There are th actually three different books. This is the primary text, The New History of Social Welfare. This is the seventh edition by Phyllis Day and Jerome Scheel. I have been waiting for a new edition to come out and I'm beginning to think that this may be the last edition. This uh, text it takes us into the well into the Obama administration, but uh, doesn't touch on uh, the issues that social welfare programming faces in the Trump administration, and I'll be adding a little bit about that as the semester goes along. But in any event, uh, this book, Phyllis Day was the primary author of this book, and Jerome Shield came on in the later years, I think the last edition. Um, Ms. Professor Day is, uh, was, is a feminist by, by uh, any uh, perception, I think. If you, as you read the book, you'll notice that. Um, and I suspect that you're going to find some things that she says in this book disturb you some. But that's okay, because uh, getting stirred up and uh, you know, upset a little bit about what you read uh, suggests that your, your worldview is being upset or disturbed some. And that's how we learn. And so uh, I like to have books that challenge um, and sometimes upset the readers. This is a book that I actually taught out of when I began teaching this course way back when, left this text to find another text, and after a couple of semesters working out of other textbooks, came back to this one because I'm just convinced this is the best one. So I think you'll find that there's a, a, a really uh, helpful perspective on social welfare in America um, as you read through her book. This is the, the course, as this uh, slide suggests, is the course that, uh, or the text rather, that the course is organized around. So uh, the, the, um, the course has a historical progression in social welfare programming. And then I have added a textbook called So You Think I Drive a Cadillac, written by Karen Seacom, uh, to kind of bring you the current day issues of welfare recipients. Now, the interesting thing about this book, and you probably do not have a book with this cover on it, this is the fourth, and again, I believe the latest edition of this text. And the publisher's been playing some funny games with this book now. And so, um, as I understand it, they're only publishing this book on an on-demand basis. So if you go in the bookstore to buy the book, or if you order from the publisher, you're going to get something that looks more like a workbook. It's not going to have this cover, but it is the full book, and it has the same content as this text uh, has. There's also online versions of this book, and of course, that's what the publisher is really wanting students to do: is to start buying eBooks instead of buying hard copy books. But uh, personally, I'm a I'm a hard copy textbook kind of guy. I like having books in my hands. Uh, but uh, whatever way works for you, just as long as you, really, I, I recommend the fourth edition. 
uh, just because it's a little more updated, I have had some students work out of the third edition, and they seem to have done okay if you find a used copy of that around. But I, the fourth edition, there's probably going to be some material in the fourth edition that might even find its way into some of the tests that would not be in the third edition. This is a good book and, and uh, will give you a good idea of what it's like to, uh, to, to be on public assistance today and why it is that the public assistance recipients do some of the things that they do. There's also a little book, and this, you know, uh, this book, as you can see, was first published in 1906. And so this is actually a, a, uh, a part of the public domain now, this book. This is just the cover of the book that I had or have had at different times. But it's, uh, you know, it's available online. You can get it for free online. The only thing I suggest, and if you're in a bookstore looking for it, you know, you know, if you find a used copy of this book, and you can find it in almost any used bookstore, probably pay a quarter for it. I mean, it's, uh, it's just a, a small book. Um, and it relates the story of immigrants uh, coming to America 100 years ago and the kinds of things that they went through in acclimating to uh, capitalism and to American society. It's, a, it's very melodramatic. Um, sometimes, especially at the beginning, it's a little hard to read because there's a lot of detail in it. But if you push through those first hundred pages or so, you're going to uh, find yourself getting engaged in the story of Jurgis Rudkus, who is the, uh, the protagonist in the book, and his wife, Ona, and their family as they try to um, become established in America, seeking a better life as immigrants did uh, 100 or so years ago. Now, my, my grandparents, in fact, uh, brought my infant father over from Hungary at just about the same time that Jurgis and Ona were arriving. And so as I read this book myself, uh, I often wonder how much of this my own grandparents went through as, as they were uh, getting acclimated. But uh, happily, their experiences were uh, more positive than Jurgis and Ona's were, but uh, I'm sure they had many difficult struggles as well. Now, this is 100 years ago, and you may wonder why we're reading about this now. First of all, this book shows you a little bit about what the United States would be like if we did not have social welfare programs. And there are many politicians today in the, of the more conservative um, ilk who would prefer to see us not have social welfare programs. If you listen to the news and you hear about people complaining about the federal budget, they're always talking about food stamps and welfare and Medicare and Medicaid, not really talking about the fence budgets or big, big tax breaks for the super wealthy and corporate, corporate tax breaks and those things. You know, it's always uh, the story is that the Congress always wants to balance the budget on the backs of the poor. This book shows you what America would be like if, if those politicians got the America they wanted. And so it's worth reading for that purpose alone. Um, also, with the uh, fuss about immigration these days in our society, even though this is 100 years ago, and even though things may look different now, and, and what immigrants from, say, you know, Latin America or from the Middle East go through today may be different in some respects. There are many similarities to the kinds of things that immigrants are experiencing today. And so keep that in mind as you work through this book as well. Now you're gonna read this book and uh, I think you, you do a short paper, um, I think it's due in week six, and then you can forget about the book, but I hope you don't. Some of you may have read this in high school. I know uh, this is a common uh, assignment in high school literature classes. Even if you did, I encourage you to read it again because it's going to fit very, uh, very well into our studies of social welfare. You'll be reading it at about the time that we're looking at this particular period of time in American history. So the syllabus is available to you through the course link called Syllabus, and you'll see there's a spot where you can... Uh, uh, open the syllabus, and I encourage you to download it and print a copy and keep a hard copy on hand. Uh, there may be minor revisions made to the syllabus as time goes along, and if that's the case, I will make note of that and notify you and will and we'll, uh, detail what the changes are in this particular section in, in, the, uh, in the Blackboard uh, course. You'll also see that the syllabus is broken out section by section as well, just for ready reference, but really... 
I want you to be sure to look through the syllabus and be sure you understand what what is expected of you here. This is this is where you'll find that. This is how you earn points in this class, and we're going to talk about each of these items here one by one. So I'm not going to go down through this list as we look at this slide, but all together, um, there are 745 points that you can possibly earn in this course, plus a few bonus points that we'll talk about. And there's a variety of different activities here. So if you're good at taking tests, you have that part. If you're better at writing papers, you have that part. If you, uh, you know, if you like the, uh, if you're better at uh, talking and debating issues, you've got that part as well. If you like current events, you got that part. So everybody's got something here in the way this course is structured. My grading scale is the same as it probably is for most all of your classes. 90% above is an A, 80% above a B, and, and so on. And so when you go through the semester, you know, uh, Blackboard is going to tell you what your grade is, but don't worry so much about what Blackboard says. What's going to matter is, going back to this, this slide, how many of these points uh, have you earned out of the ones you could possibly earn, and that's what's going to determine your grade. So 90% of 745 points, and I don't have the scale in front of me, but you know what that is, and that's how many points you're going to have to get to get an A or above. The first, uh, the first item on your uh, uh, points list is participation and attendance, and obviously we, we don't meet, we don't have a uh, you know, a face-to-face -face or a, uh, we don't meet and collaborate or anything over the web. This is purely what we call asynchronous. And so that means that you come in and you do your work as you have time. So I can tell when you've checked into Blackboard, uh, Blackboard tells me that. And so both in terms of the, the uh, <clears throat> let's say, the frequency of your participation, as well as whether or not you really follow through all of the assignments and how thoroughly you do the assignments each week, are the kinds of things that are going to get you these points. You will get 50, 50 points if you if you do everything that I'm asking you to do here. Another way to earn points is through your discussion boards. Now, uh, if you haven't ever worked through discussion boards uh, before, I have a section in, in the week one uh, uh, content that tells you a little bit about how to work those things, I believe. And uh, what you're going to do is you want to read the, the assignments during the week, listen to the lectures that I have posted during the week, and then go into the discussion board link and respond to the, the question or the prompt that is there um, with, a, with a, a post, a thread is what this is called, you, you, and, uh, of 150 words or more. And, and really, 150 words is a minimum. I encourage you to write more but no less than 150 words. So if uh, the weekly content opens on Sunday morning, uh, you'll find after you have, you know, the discussion board uh, prompt is, is there for the week uh, at the appropriate place in the, in the course menu and in, and in the weekly course content. So you read and listen to the lectures you, you respond to that, uh, that prompt with a response of 150 words or more. And then by the following Sunday night, that is, you do that. And then within four days after that, by the following Thursday after that, you go back and you read some of your classmates' posts and you respond to them. Now, they don't have to, those responses don't have to be 150 words. They can be. But really what matters is that you have some substantial response. So... Not just, yeah, I agree, or no, you're wrong, and leave it at that, but, um, you know, kind of develop or respond to what that person says by adding to the conversation. So it becomes a discussion that way. That way. If you subscribe to your post, and there's a little button um, where, you, where you, put in your, uh, you put in your responses, if you subscribe to your post, whenever somebody responds to what you've written, I believe you get an email, I think it's in your, your UAA address, tells you that somebody's responded. You can go back in and read that and respond to them again if you want. So that's what turns this into a discussion. I want to see real discussion here. I want to see that you are paying attention to the material you've been assigned. And if you do that, you'll, you'll get the full 10 points. 
Now, this is a post that everyone can see, everyone in the class that is, including myself. Now, I won't necessarily be participating in these discussion boards. I will respond from time to time, but uh, generally, uh, this is a, but I consider this to be the part where you talk with your classmates about the material. Uh, like I said, I may chime in, but mostly it's going to be between you and your classmates. So keep that in mind and, and uh, practice the good rules of netiquette, and we'll talk, touch on that in a few moments. Um, be, be considerate of others when you do make your responses. Um, by the way, no, uh, please don't use chat language, no, uh, you know, LOLs and you are for your and those kinds of things. This is a, this is a college class and I want you to write out the words, not to use uh, text abbreviations and those kinds of things. So you have each week there'll be a discussion board prompt. You get up to up to 10 points for that and how you well, I'll touch on that in a minute. But up to 10 points for your discussion board prompt each week. That's 140 points over the course of the semester. And occasionally there are going to be two discussion boards in, in a learning unit so that you can earn some extra credit points. And you might not think that 10 points is going to matter much, but later in the semester it might. And so I will encourage you to, um, you know, to respond to both prompts. But it doesn't matter which one you respond to. You can choose one or the other. Um, it, the extra credit is just when you do two of them. Next, uh, I, I call it in the course, I think, the weekly e-scrapbook journal. And I call it the e-scrapbook because in the olden days when I was teaching this class in the classroom, students were actually clipping articles out of the newspapers and magazines and making scrapbooks about what was going on during the semester related to social welfare and the topics that we're studying. Now, of course, we don't do that anymore, and so this is sort of an e-scrapbook. And what you're doing here is uh, paying attention to the media, listening to the news, uh, going online, reading the paper, reading the magazines, wherever you get your news. Please make sure it's a reliable source, uh, an unbiased source of it all possible. And uh, then write a brief summary in your journal that um, uh, summarizes what it is the article's about. Don't copy and paste, but write in your own words what the story is about, what the news is about, and then write a paragraph of 200 words or more of, of your reaction to this, what you think about this particular story or this particular news item, whatever it may be. And it should be a current event related to social welfare or civil rights, you know, things that we're studying about in this course. So, you know, that can be lots of different things. Social welfare includes not only public assistance and food stamps, but means also things like services for the elderly and uh, services for the homeless and the education budget and, you know, all those kinds of things where tax dollars take care of public programs and things. This is all what I consider social welfare. Civil rights, of course, you know what those things are. And, you know, women's rights and gay rights and, you know, and minority rights and all those kinds of things. And so there's all sorts of stories about these things all the time in the news. And this is where I want you to show me that you're paying attention to what's going on in the world. Now, in this particular case, we're only doing this every other week. And in this class, I believe week two, you'll find your first journal, uh, your first journal post. So there won't be a journal this week. There will be one next week. And then every other week after that, I think until late semester because of Thanksgiving break, it kind of skips an additional week, but your weekly course content will tell you when there's a journal post. So again, summarize the story, summarize the news item, and, and uh, then uh, write a reaction paragraph of 200 words or more to that. And by the way, while the discussion boards are, are public kind of within the class, journals are between you and me alone. No one else reads them. So you can say a few things there that you might not want to say in a larger class, I suppose. So, um, or if you've got something that's, uh, you know, kind of impacting you on a personal level that you would like to talk with me about or share with me here, but not with the whole class, this is a good opportunity to do that. So, you know, think about this as if, you know, like if we're at break or at the end of class, you take me with, by the arm and say, you know, uh, Professor Gaelic, I'd like to talk with you uh, about something. Do you have a few minutes? It would be a good, good time to do that. So 
As far as the discussion boards and the journals, uh, you'll find a very thorough description of how, about how you can earn your points in this week's learning unit. And also in the course menu, you'll find an item called board and journal grading guidelines that kind of repeats all that process for you there. So it's always there for ready reference. And in that, by the way, there is an excellent uh, um, uh, sort of a template for you for writing your journal articles. And so please do look at that. And, and uh, uh, I would like to see you present your journal posts the way that uh, uh, this is an actual journal post that a student made some years ago. So try to, try to use that format for your journal posts. That's all in in these items in this week's uh, content as well as in the uh, course menu. So please, please do read through these things carefully. When you have read The Jungle, you're going to write a paper uh, about three to five pages long. Now that's, you know, that, how many words you get on a page depends on a number of different things. And I'm talking to probably 12 point font. Uh, and People say you want single space or double space. I like 1.5. <laughs> it's not going to be in a world if you single space it or you double space, but 1.5 spaces, you know, it's just you get more on the page and, and it's just easier to read. Um, now, um, a good jungle paper is going to summarize the book. It's going to describe your reaction to the book. And, uh, and then we'll tie... Uh, different por portions of the book into course concepts. That's a good full credit. This is 75 points, this, this paper. And uh, there will be a link for you in the, uh, uh, through the assignments link. You won't see it yet because it's you know, not available to you yet, but in a few weeks it'll become available. And you'll, you'll write your paper and, and attach it there as a Word document. Uh, don't don't write directly into the tool, but attach it as a Word document, and then I'll go in there actually and grade it right in there, and and uh, you can go back in there later and read what I my comments on that as well. That's I think week six, the end of week six when you have to have that paper turned in. Now the big uh, point earner is the uh, research project, and and this is a group project. Now, group projects can be difficult in sometimes the uh, best of circumstances, and online sometimes it's even more difficult because you don't necessarily see each other face to face. Some groups do. Um, when when everybody's in Anchorage, they decide to get together at Starbucks or something, and you know, kind of put their heads together in a paper. But uh, a lot of groups don't ever see each other, and so you know, it's really going to depend upon you um, connecting uh, through, and you'll have a group site given to you in Blackboard. And that site will be just for you and your fellow group members. Only the only your group will be able to see that and me. Okay, and so that's where you can you can submit documents through that site. You can work together in a paper in a wiki if you want to. Um, you know, you you have a, your own private discussion board there, and you also have the opportunity to meet through collaborate through the the online collaborate tool. Uh, through your group site as well. So there's lots of different ways to work together. I know a lot of people prefer to work through Google and Google Docs, and that's okay with me. But, um, well, we'll get to that in a minute. But in any event, what I want to say is when, when your groups are assigned, and that will happen probably three, four weeks into the semester, connect with your fellow group members early and stay in touch with them regularly throughout the semester because you're going to depend upon each other to get this final project submitted. You're going to work together to make one paper. Um, and uh, I, I don't have the uh, specs for the paper here, but I think it's it's a pretty big paper. I think 12 to 15 pages, something like that. However many words, that's like 5,000 words, I think. So it's going to really depend upon all of you working together in this. And you're going to put one paper together. If, if uh, somebody craps out in your project that doesn't do their work, you're supposed to make up for that. So this means keep talking to each other so you know if somebody's not contributing, you're going to have to make up for the work that, they, that they're not doing. Even, even if somebody doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, contribute their share, it's still not a, uh, anything that isn't manageable at all. So this is 150 points out of the um, total points for the semester. So this is something you want to pay serious attention to here. So the group work you do together like I said, probably three or four of you will be in a group, sometimes five, depending upon 
I have a pretty full class this time, so we may find groups of five, certainly groups of four. Um, I take three or four weeks to assign these groups because I want to see who is, uh, usually there's a few students who really aren't engaging in a class, and I, I try to, as much as I can to spread them out among the groups so that uh, one group isn't saddled with three or four people who really aren't interested in a class, you know. Uh, goodness knows why they wouldn't be interested, but sometimes they're not. And so, um, otherwise, group assignments in these groups are random. And, and uh, you know, the other thing is, is you're going to be talking about a controversial topic. And let's say the topic might be, oh, you know, whether or not guns should be rest, uh, restricted. Okay. And uh, you may be assigned to the yes, they should be uh, restricted or to the no, they should not be restricted side. And that may or may not agree with your own view. And, and even if it doesn't agree with your view, um, you're to research the, what the information is behind the stance of the other side. So this is a research project. It's not an opinion piece. You're not trying to persuade anybody of something. You're researching what it is that is behind the position that people take when they have a stance on a particular social topic. There'll be more about this as time goes on, but it's an interesting project, and people always say they learn a lot from each other. Now, getting this paper done is one part of this. Um, also, there is a, a thing called group check-ins, uh, so that during, and, and you'll know when these check-in dates are when I sign the projects, but uh, I will go into your group site and see if everybody is participating. And this now you might be working in Google Docs and you might be meeting every day at Starbucks and calling each other on the phone. And I don't know that. How I know you're working on it is if I see evidence of your work in, in the Blackboard work site that I give you. And so that means uh, perhaps, you know, sharing some information in the discussion board or posting things in the file exchange or something like that. So twice during the semester, I'll be going in there to see if you're active in the project in, in this work and you'll earn points or not based upon that. After the papers are completed, um, I will take your clean copy of your paper and I'll post it in a discussion board forum and your classmates will read that paper and there'll be a discussion board about your topic and you'll participate in that with your classmates. Likewise, then, you will also read your classmates' papers and, and engage in discussions about them and that's gonna go on over the period of about three weeks pretty late in the semester uh, after all the papers are turned in. And again, more on that, we call them the peer review forums, but uh, you get up to 50 points for participating in those discussions. And so this is a way for you to share what you learn in your, in your project uh, with the rest of the class, and also for the class for you to learn what everybody else learned in their research as well. So you really get a lot of, uh, you know, the knowledge multiplies through this project this way. If, if I were, uh, you know, if we were in a classroom setting, you might be doing presentations on your, on your coursework, but we don't have that here. And so what we're doing instead is, uh, is uh, you know, these, these peer review forums. There are two tests. These tests will be multiple choice. They are in Blackboard. Um, <laughs> you will have uh, two attempts to uh, achieve the score. Oops, now I goofed. Sorry. Two attempts to achieve the score that you want. So you're going to Blackboard. The test will open um, on a Thursday of the week that it opens. That's week seven and week 15. Um, you go in and you take the test right there in Blackboard. Multiple choice questions. If you don't like the score you get, and you get this, you'll get feedback instantly. Uh, you can go in and take the test again. And you have 11 days from the time it opens until the time the test closes to take the test. Once you have opened the test, you have to finish it. So you can't open it and then go back a half a day later and, and finish it. If You'll have a time period, I think, the first one with, with 40 questions, I think you have 90 minutes, I believe, to do it, I think is how it is. You'll know what the limit is. And... Um, you have to finish the test within that time period or the test will close and whatever you answer it is going to be your score. So you can do it with open book, but if you haven't read the book, it's going to be difficult for you to find answers. You know, so, so you can use the book as a resource, but my suggestion to you is 
read first and take the test after you've done that. The second test is worth 60 points and we'll cover the whole semester. So altogether, you have 100 points there. Now again, when that 11 day period that that test is open has passed, the test is no longer available. And if you haven't taken the test by then, you forfeit the points. At three times during the semester, there will be a second discussion board in the weekly course content. And that's where you have an opportunity to earn up, up to 30 bonus points altogether during the semester. So, uh, you know, again, I'll tell you that those 10 points might not seem like much uh, at the time, but later on in the semester, it could be the difference between an A and a B. So I would encourage you every time you get a chance to respond to two discussion boards, do that. Never hurts to have extra points. You've probably already noticed that when you open the course, it opens to the announcements page and you should always check and make sure that the, uh, the newest announcement should be on top and, and uh, check and make sure you've seen that announcement. Um, you, every time I post an announcement, I have an email sent to your UAA account or whatever account it is that you have registered with UAA. And so you should be getting emails with all this as well. And if you're not getting emails uh, for these announcements, then that tells you you need to talk to IT that there's something wrong with your account. Always look and listen, read, my, read these emails, always look at announcements. This is sort of like me at the beginning of the class saying, before we get started, I have something I have to tell you. Check your email account regularly with the university. The weekly course content is really where you access all the work and you see that on the course menu. This is uh, each week's content becomes available to you on a Sunday morning. So this week when you opened it, you found uh, week one material. On Sunday morning, and you go in, you're going to find week two material there in addition to week one. And then Sunday morning after that, week three's material will be there. And so week after week after week after week, the new course content will open. And you'll have the previous week's content there as well. Um, each week's content, you want to read each slide every week. This is, this is where all the work is in the class. So generally, each week's content will have at least these slides, which is an opening slide, something that I have written. Uh, about the material that, that kind of gets you thinking uh, in a way that I think you need to be thinking as you approach the work. There'll be the learning objectives for the week. The next pane will have your assignments, reading assignments and other activity assignments that may be uh, given to you to complete during the week. Then there will be recorded lectures, uh, sometimes only one, but usually two, once or twice even four, but uh, <laughs> usually not. So you're going to have um, as much as, um, you know, two and a half hours of, of recorded lectures to listen to in a week. That's the same thing as if you were sitting in a classroom with me, right? Except we're not in a classroom. So consider this your class time. Um, listen to those lectures, please. And then after you've done the readings, after you've listened to the lectures, the next uh, thing will be the discussion board link. And uh, I think we call it response to readings most of the weeks. You click on that, you'll find the discussion board prompt, respond to the prompt. Remember, um, go back by Thursday the following week to respond to two other, two of your classmates' posts for the full 10 points. The next uh, slide or pane or whatever in your course will be your journal link. Now that's, I said here, your, in fact, let me go ahead and change that because it should say your bi-weekly e-scrapbook. Um, that's every other week you'll have a, a scrapbook, uh, a journal article to post about. Um, and you click on the underscored thing there. It takes you to the place where you post your journals. Um, the next slide will have, of course, lecture slides. So all the lectures that I have posted, like, for instance, including this one, you'll find PDF versions of all of these slides for you to to um, if you want to download it and save them and make a little book, you can <laughs> You can, but uh, just, you know, sometimes it's helpful to people uh, when they're studying. I, I've always had students in class ask me for copies of my, of, my, uh, of my notes, and this is really what that will be. Occasionally, for instance, on test weeks, you'll find your tests. You access that through your weekly course content. Um, course evaluations will be there, those kinds of things. But at a minimum, you'll see these... Uh, 
seven or eight items, mostly every week. Journal every other week. Now, netiquette. You know, you guys are mostly all uh, very well uh, apprised of how to communicate and how not to communicate over the web. Um, I still remember the day when we were just beginning to work with computers and we used to call it the World Wide Web. That's the WWW, right? You know, I mean, that when that was all new and, and nobody really knew how to deal with it. And uh, suddenly, because some people don't like using the shift key when they type, you know, some people type in all caps and suddenly that became yelling and screaming. And, you know, we had to learn all these things. And, um, and I kind of chuckle when I talk about that. But the fact is, is that, you know, when we communicate with each other, uh, mind you, we haven't met each other, you know, and so you don't really know this guy's a joker or that woman, you know, she's, uh, you know, she's very, uh, she's very intelligent or this person, this guy's real sensitive and misunderstands everything that's said, you know, we don't know that about each other because we don't really interact a whole lot in person, if at all. And so uh, we only know what you've written, what you've typed. And if you're, if you're into sarcasm, this is not the place to be sarcastic. You know, if, if you have a kind of an odd sense of humor, not everybody's going to appreciate that sense of humor. And sometimes you're going to say things, even though you think it shouldn't, that will offend the other person if you're not careful with what you put down. So this is just a way of saying, be aware that you don't have all those verbal and nonverbal cues that we have when we talk with each other. And so people easily misunderstand other people's comments or interpret them in a way that you don't intend for them to be interpreted. And so keep in mind that the person at the other end of, of your writing has feelings. Never, never say things that are going to derogate others. Don't threaten other people. Um, you know, again, your sense of humor may be great, but I've seen a few times when people get into quite a bit of trouble for uh, making uh odd humor and and uh i uh, you know on occasion uh, just just please be careful with what you say to each other but the other thing is be forgiving of of the other person if they've said something that seemed uh, kind of over the line to you you know you might talk with that person or write to that person um you know let them know how you react to that or whatever but uh but be forgiving of other people when they make mistakes and listen when other people come to you with concerns. So for this week's discussion board, you're going to write a post of about 150 words or more. And, and this is going to be really about who you are. So, uh, you know, just uh, write a little, introduce yourself to your classmates. Here are some ideas of things you might you might write about, you know, but uh, the, you don't have to write about these things. You can write about other things, anything that comes to mind, but something that gives you a good idea, gives us all an idea who it is that's on the other side of, you know, behind that name <laughs> in our class roster. Um, and and uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. If, if you're comfortable with this, I encourage you to post some photos, but it's certainly not required and some people don't want to do that. That's fine. But it can be a picture of you. It can be a picture of your pets, your family, your home, your community, you know, someplace you've been uh, or, or nothing. It's up to you. But I just find that sometimes, and not only in this, but all posts, I find that photographs, uh, pictures sometimes add to what you're saying and make, make the discussion boards more interesting. But that's, that's up to you. So by next Sunday night, that is September 1st, you should have posted this 150 words or more. Um, and then by the Thursday after that, that would be, what, September 2, 3, 4, 5th, uh, you should have gone back in and responded to at least two of your classmates' posts. Also, just start getting in the habit of watching the news now and listening to things online or in television or in the paper, if you ever read the paper anymore. You know, uh, what, are the, what are the things that are going on about social welfare and civil rights? And some examples, you know, anything about the social welfare programming that's going on or any, any programs about, you know, human beings, basically, you know, funding or not funding them, the budget. That's a big issue in Alaska right now. Uh, if you've been paying attention at all, you got to know that. Um, 
and, and there's a whole host of things there about services of the homeless and you know, education funding and, and, and uh, the services for the elderly and for village safety and things like that. All appropriate things to comment on. Education, civil rights, racism, sexism, health care reform, immigration, same-sex marriage, gay rights, on and on and on and on. Okay? You get the idea. A whole host of things. Very interesting things in our world today. Your first journal entry will be in week two. And again, summarize the story in your own words and then give me a separate paragraph with a reaction of about 100 or 200 words rather to the item. Also, when you begin to read the first few chapters in the Phyllis Day text, pay particular attention to the nine American values that she describes in the first chapter because this really is the kind of a, a foundation concept that we'll be looking at throughout the rest of the semester. These are values that she says that every one of us who were raised as Americans have inside of us. Now, they may not be values that we intellectually subscribe to. Maybe we do, but we might not. We may think that's a bunk. You know, like one of them is the American ideal, you know, that, that it's good to be tall, dark and handsome or, you know, uh, big breasted and thin if you're a female, you know, whatever. We don't necessarily believe that, you know, but but Phyllis Day says if you were born American and raised American somewhere inside of you, that value is there and motivates you partly. So what goes on intellectually may be not what goes on inside of you. And it's important to understand that. Um, as we go about this idea of looking at social welfare and as we work with other people if you're going to stay in this field. So, good thing to learn. Um, all right, so that's all for this week and I hope that this gives you a pretty good introduction to things. If you have questions, you have my email addresses, uh, you have my phone number if you want to call. Um, otherwise, uh, full speed ahead and uh, tune back in next week for... Uh, you know, the, the uh, starting on Sunday morning, actually, for a week two content, and we're on our way. Okay, have a good semester.